So, so far we've looked at a few sorting algorithms. These are all what are called naive sorting algorithms. We haven't looked at any what you might call industrial strength sorting algorithms. And we're going to start today doing that. We're going to talk about merge sort mainly as an example of what's called a divide and conquer sorting algorithm. The other one we'll be talking about in a couple of lectures is quick sort. Now, merge sort and quick sort are both what are called divide and conquer algorithms. They're a type of recursive algorithm, and they're at opposite ends of some kind of continuum. So to explain that, suppose we have a list that we have to sort. Each of these algorithms works by splitting the list in two and spawning some recursive calls on sublist to the left and right. Now, they work in quite different ways. So, merge sort. operates by splitting right down the middle. If it's an even sized list, it splits it into two lists of the same size, and otherwise they're one different in size. And it splits it right down the middle and recursively sorts the left and the right. Then everything in here is sorted, everything in here is sorted, but there's still some unsortedness of things in here relative to things in here. And some clever work is required in order to merge the two sorted lists that you have back into one big sorted list. And that's really where all the work of merge sort is. The so-called divide and conquer algorithm where the divide part, splitting into subproblems, is trivial, split down the middle, but the conquer part, combine the solutions to the subproblems, is difficult, relatively. Quick sort works in quite a different way. It chooses some element according to some procedure, which we talk about later, and puts it in the right position. It puts it some element, let's say, okay, so for example, suppose it picks the first element by some serious amount of work, make sure that it goes in its correct position, meaning that it goes somewhere such that all the larger elements are to the right and all the smaller elements are to the left. So there's a lot of work required there, so the divide part is difficult, but the conquer part is trivial because then it just recursively sorts this and this in place and doesn't need to move that because this is in the right place relative to these two. Now, each of these algorithms turns out to be a lot more efficient than insertion sort or selection sort. Remember that on average, or in worst case, we have order n squared inversions in our input. Obviously, if you want to run quickly, relatively, we have to be removing a lot of inversions at each step. If we're only removing a constant number of inversions at each step, it'll still take quadratic time to run the algorithm. Each of these algorithms gives a solution to this problem of getting rid of a lot of inversions. And we'll start with looking at merge sort for the rest of this lecture. So here's some pseudocode for merge sort. It takes in a list of size n. If n is 1, then it does nothing. Otherwise, it chooses the median index of the list. If the list has even size, then it's actually going to choose the first of the two possible medians. It splits into a left and a right sublist the left one going right up to the median, and the right one being the rest of it, sorts those recursively, then merges the two together and returns that. So how are we going to merge two sorted lists into a single sorted list? We might as well think about this a bit more generally. In the case of merge sort, we're always going to have two lists which are the same size or whose size only differs by one because of the way merge sort splits down the middle. But in general, we might want to have two sorted lists that are of arbitrary sizes. Now, in the worst case, we're going to have to look at every element of both lists to be sure we have the correct ordering of the final list. But we don't want to do worse than that. We don't want to be looking at them repeatedly. So it's a good idea now to pause this video and think for three or four minutes about how you would solve this problem. OK, now you've thought about that. Let's see whether you came up with something similar to what I'm going to talk about here. The basic observation is that if I have a sorted list here and a sorted list here, 
let's say they're sorted from smaller to larger as we go along. The smallest element in the total merge list has got to be the smallest element here or the smallest element there. Nothing else could work. So in order to find the first element of the output list, we should look at these two. And then obviously we should choose whichever one is the smaller. Let's say it's this one. Now we have a smaller problem. We want to merge the remaining lists. And the list that we got out of that, we can just append to that first element that we already have. And we will have a, a final sorted list. How do we do that? Just what we did before. The smallest element remaining has got to be one of the top two elements. And we just keep doing that until one of the lists becomes empty. Suppose this list is empty, we've still got some left here, we can just put all those elements and append them to the end of the, what we already have, because they're all bigger than everything back there, and everything is still in the right order, because these were sorted. Let's illustrate the linear time merge on these two sorted lists, one of size 4, one of size 3. We do the comparison here of the top elements. Move this to the output pile. Now compare these. Move that one to the output pile. Next. 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 And now we can move this entire list here because we know that the right hand one is empty and that everything here must be bigger than everything that's already been down on the output list. We've now got a sorted list of the full size, formed by knitting together the two originally sorted lists that we started with. Right, let's try merge sort on this input. We first split into two sublists of size 4. Now let's look at the first one. We split this into two sublists of size 2. Now look at the first one here. We split this into two sublists of size one. 1. They need to be merged. We compare them. The smaller one goes on the output pile. And the next one. Now that's sorted. Doing the same thing here. We split. And then we merge those two. Like that. Now we have two sorted sublists of size 2 and we use the obvious method to sort them by moving to the output pile one by one. Now we have to do the entire thing with the right hand sublist which is our other recursive call. We split into two things of size 2 we first split this into things of size 2, we go to the output, here we split, we move that like that, now we have two sublists of size 2 here, each of which is sorted, now we merge them back in, the 3, then we compare the 4 with the 5, 4 goes here. And now because this pile is empty, we can copy this one straight in. Now we have two sublists of size 4, each of which is sorted. And we need to knit those together using the merge. So we compare here to the output pile. And we're going to do the obvious thing. Now we have two fives, and we can take them in whichever order we like. In this case, I'll just do it like that. It may be important which way we do it for stability of the algorithm. I'll let you think about that. So let's suppose that Cn is the number of comparisons made by merge sort on an input of size n. 
Now already there's an issue here because we know that the number of comparisons is not going to be the same for all inputs. So we may want to have a think about the worst case or the average case. For now, I just want to have a look at the recursive nature of the algorithm. So what the algorithm does is it first splits into two problems of size roughly a half. If n is odd, then one will be a little bit bigger than a half, one a little bit smaller. And then it recursively sorts those, and then it does the merge. Now the merge part, we'll call it, say, m of n, right? Where m of n equals the number of comparisons made by merge. The thing here is that merge does different numbers of comparisons depending on the size of the input. Suppose you had an input that looked like this and another one that looked like that. Then when you merge them together, you will compare only four times and then you will copy the rest of this onto the output list because these four elements have already gone. This list has already been exhausted. On the other hand, if you choose them to alternate, then you'll bounce around and you'll actually do n minus 1 comparisons. So it's some number between 1 actually and n minus 1, or maybe between n over 2 and n minus 1. So I am going to assume for now that it's just n because that will give an upper bound for what we want. We're going to try to show the running time of merge sort is not that big. So if we get something which is an upper bound, we show that's not too big, then we know the original one can't be too big either. If n is a power of 2, then that's the simplest case and we get rid of the complicated things with the ceilings and the floors. Then if n is a power of 2, every time you split in half you get an integer exactly. And so this number is just n over 2, this is n over 2 all the way down for every n, n over 2, n over 4, n over 8. So you actually get that. And let's just write down n to make it simple. Actually, we know it's no more than n minus 1, but as I said before, it's an upper bound. This here is what I'm going to call the merge sort recurrence. Solving this is going to turn out to be enough. So, how do we solve such a recurrence? Now, that's not so obvious, right? It's really unclear, looking at it, what the solution is going to be. So, the next lecture is going to consider this and other similar types of recurrences systematically. So we're calling this the merge sort recurrence. And this gives a good idea of the running time of merge sort, at least for special sizes of n, but in fact it will turn out to be good enough to give you the answer for all n. First question, is merge sort stable? And the next one, is it in place? These should be easy to answer once you've gone through the algorithm. As usual, we want to have a look at the difference between arrays and linked lists. Now, it turns out that merge sort can be implemented really quite nicely on linked lists, much better than on arrays in some sense. There's a bit of work to understand why, but you think about that. Think about what happens when you do the recursive calls, get to the bottom, and then want to come back up. It's a little bit of a vague hint, but it's something for, to think about there. Very important question, obviously. We've described the running time of the recursive algorithm merge sort by a recursive function, a recurrence relation for the running time. How do we solve that? How do we get any kind of explicit explanation. How can I see whether it's 
or to n squared the solution or in n or n log n or whatever it happens to be. That's a key issue that we're going to discuss in the next lecture. It's good for you to play with that yourself a little bit first, see whether you can understand how to solve that merge sort recurrence. Okay, so as I said, the next lecture will cover recurrence relation solution techniques, and we'll see you then.